welcome to biology my passion i am saumya hari krishna now we are studying the chapter human health and diseases and we already learned about certain infectious diseases life cycle of the malarial parasite and in the previous video we discussed the immune system in general today we are going to see the components or the parts of our immune system so our immune system basically consists of two types of organs first is called a primary lymphoid organs the second is secondary lymphoid organs so before i go into the details of this i just would like to introduce you to the basics of antigen and the antibody so in the previous video when we discussed the different types of cells involved in immune system we talked about this lymphocyte cells right b lymphocytes and the t lymphocytes there we learned b lymphocytes produce antibodies whereas t lymphocytes help the b lymphocytes to produce those antibodies now what are these antibodies when are they produced so antibodies are nothing but certain proteins they are immunoglobulins okay they are kind of proteins these proteins are produced in response to the presence of certain antigens so what are antigens let us see the word meaning of antigen anti means antibody gen stands for generating so antibody generating so what are antibody generating substances the any substances that can trigger the production of antibody within our body that is called a antigen so usually when we talk about infectious agents they are acting as antigens in our body because once they enter the body they trigger the production of antibody now who is producing this antibody our immune system and later it will remain in our blood that is called the memory of our immune system all those we discussed so now let us move to the lymphoid organs two types are there primary lymphoid organ and a secondary lymphoid organ so again i am taking you to the analogy which i used in the previous video that our immune system cells are like the soldiers in our body right like how the army or the soldiers are protecting our country the same way these different cells are trained in different ways to protect us and once a person is recruited into the army a civilian is recruited into the army they cannot be directly sent to the war field right first they need training they have to be trained well physically mentally they have to be prepared to face the hardships their training is in different modes depending upon whether they are air force or army or navy depending like that the same way here also the cells have to be trained so these cells basically the lymphocytes we are talking about these cells are basically produced in the bone marrow after that bone marrow they move to primary organs after formation these immature cells are they are just born like babies they are they are like civilians they don't know anything about the uh, defense okay they move to the primary lymphoid organs there are two primary lymphoid organs in our body they are bone marrow and the thymus now what do they do at these places they are basically immature lymphocytes okay but they differentiate into antigen sensitive lymphocyte why antigen sensitive because these antibodies are highly specific suppose one antibody is produced against chicken pox that will not work against diphtheria or once it is made against diphtheria will not work against the bacteria causing leprosy or typhoid okay so for each pathogen or antigen antibody has to be produced because it is just like a lock and key model that we explained during enzyme action like how a specific lock can be opened by a key the same way here also they fit together only once they fit the process or the destruction can happen so here it is highly specific so they have to be made antigen sensitive first so first they are simply produced like a civilian nothing uh, they know about it but once they are brought to the training camp these primary lymphoid organs are like the training camps of the uh, these recruited candidates where they will be trained or they be, they are made antigen specific that is which type of warfare they have to use or which type of uh, weapons they have to use okay so which are the organs bone marrow and uh, thymus so bone marrow will be producing or this um, uh, immature lymphocytes will differentiate into b lymphocyte and from thymus they become the t lymphocytes t for thymus b for bone marrow that's why the name b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes 
Now, once they are finishing the training, we know, suppose these are recruited candidates, finish their training three, hour, three years or four years, if officer rank and all, uh, four years and all. After that, they will be recruited to different regions where their service is required, right? That is the place where they are going to work. And most of the time, these areas are very uh, important regions of uh, the country or sometimes they may be uh, they will have to fight the enemies from there so it is like a kind of war field so there are different areas or very uh, sensitive areas they will be deployed so that is called a secondary organ so secondary lymphoid organs are many in our body for example spleen we will uh, discuss in detail all this spleen lymph nodes tonsils pears patches of small intestine and appendix these are the secondary lymphoid organs now what are they doing the they provide site for interaction of this lymphocyte with the antigen so they will be binding with the antigen though they are antigen specific in the primary lymphoid organ once they reach the site of this secondary lymphoid organ they get opportunity to come face to face with the antigen and uh, fight with them right so bind with them and then proliferate to become effector cells they will uh, change into effector cells so that they will be able to destroy the antigens so uh, primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs are very important part of your lesson and many times they ask the differences and also sometimes they give a list of these organs and they will ask you to identify which all are primary which all are secondary so let us discuss little bit about these organs first bone marrow bone marrow means what it is within the bone where we know all the blood cells are forming along with the blood cells lymphocytes are also produced within the bone marrow Thymus is located uh, near the heart beneath the breastbone and it is a small lobed structure. At the time of birth it is quite large and provides immunity to the baby but keeps on uh, decreasing the size as we grow up. By the time we reach puberty it uh, attains a very small size. Bone marrow and thymus together they give the micro environment for the maturation of the lymphocyte cells. Now next organ is a spleen. Spleen is a large bean shaped organ. Spleen has many lymphocyte cells and phagocytic cells. I told about phagocytic cells. They are the cells which are eating away the microbes. So it's actually acting as a filter uh, of blood. Once blood passes through it, all the blood borne microbes will be captured there. And with the help of these lymphocytes and phagocytes, they are destroyed. And also spleen is known as the graveyard of RBC because our red blood cells have the lifespan of only 120 days. After 120 days, they are destroyed in the spleen. We have a lymphatic system in our body. You have learned about the formation of lymph from the blood in class 11. So the different parts of the lymphatic system, there are small node-like structures. They are called a lymph nodes. Actually, lymph nodes will capture all the antigens which are trapped in the lymph okay or the tissue fluid so this trapped antigens will trigger the formation of lymphocytes and cause immune response so apart from this we have some lymphoid tissues present called a malt malt stands for mucosal associated lymphoid tissue that means uh, uh, in the openings of our body like our urinogenital tract or digestive tract and respiratory tract there are lymphoid tissues associated in order to provide this immune response so they are called a malt actually 50 percent of the lymphoid organs are constituted by malt now pears patches are some kind of sub epithelial follicles lymphoid follicles uh, present in the intestine so they are, also, they are also helping in immune response. And appendix, you know, it is a small finger-like projection between the uh, small intestine and large intestine. And the appendix is actually considered as a vestigial organ. So these are the secondary lymphoid organs. There are two types of immune systems based on the uh, B cells and the T cells. So the immune system brought about by the action of T cells is called a cell mediated immune system or CMI. It constitutes 60 to 70 percent of the immune system. Whereas the antibody mediated or the B cell mediated uh, immune system is called a humoral immune system. Okay, so let us start with the, the cell mediated immune system which is brought about by our T cells. So T cells are basically four types. The helper T cells, killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells, suppressor cells and memory T cells. So uh, basically when one antigen comes inside the body, that means a pathogen comes inside the body, first macrophages will interact with them. 
So the macrophages will in turn trigger this T lymphocytes or activate the helper T lymphocytes. The helper T lymphocytes will produce certain substances which in turn will trigger killer T cells and B cells. And it will promote the B cells to produce antibodies against this particular antigen entered the body. And it will multiply, that is B cells and the killer T cells, they multiply in large number or they make the clones of themselves. Now, WBC cells will get uh, collected at the site of infection. The killer T cells secrete something called the lymphotoxic substances. Using these substances, they can kill the infected cells or the targeted cells and uh, the pathogens or even the cancerous cells. These lymphotoxic cells press, uh, produce a substance called the lymphokines. They can actually trigger the production of phagocytes. And they invite these phagocytes to the site. But as a result, what happens? The transplanted tissues uh, will be destroyed. Tumor cells will be destroyed. And even the infected cells will be destroyed. Now, their action has to be stopped by certain other cells called the suppressor T cells. Suppressor T cells will suppress the action of the T killer T cells as well as the B lymphocytes. The last effector cells or the memory T cells, they are not actually involved in killing or producing any antibody, but they will memorize the each encounter. So the next time when the encounter is happening, these cells will turn into the effector cells and bring about the necessary immune response. 10 to 20 percent of our immune system works based on the uh, humoral immune system or we can call it as antibody mediated immune system. That is antibodies are produced by our B lymphocytes. These antibodies are nothing but certain kind of proteins called the immunoglobulins. These immunoglobulin or antibodies have four polypeptide chains, two heavy chains and two light chains. So they are called the H2L2 structure. These uh, heavy chains are, uh, and light chains, they are connected together by disulfide linkage. And also they have a site where the antigen can bind and uh, at that site the antigens are destroyed. There are different types of antibodies uh, in our body. IgG, IgA, Ig stands for immunoglobin. IgG, IgA, IgM and IgE are the major uh, immunoglobulins or the antibodies produced in our body. And there are uh, different types of antibodies apart from this like a D is also present. This immune system can function against the uh, transplanted organs also. So whenever a tissue or an organ is transplanted that is called a graft. Uh, three criteria have to be followed before we transplant any organ. One is the matching of the blood group. Second, matching of the tissue. And third, uh, the uh, uh, administering of our immunosuppressant agents. That means we have to take certain medicines to suppress our immune system so that it does not reject our graft. So if we see the types of grafts, there are four categories auto graft or it is self graft that means if a tissue is taken from one part of the body and it is used in a different part we can call it as auto graft and this is the most successful one for example those people who are having certain um, in, uh, accidents or something sometimes we may have to take a piece of flesh or uh, skin from one part of the body and graft it onto the deformed region like that so it's most successful because it is within our body so our body does not reject it second is isograft Isograft is between two individuals having the same genetic constitution that is basically between the identical twins their DNA constituents are same so uh, definitely their rejection chance is also less. Then homograft or allograft. Homograft means within the same species that means um, within the between human beings only but the, here we most probably we go for the closest relative closer the relationship higher the success rate so we have to go for the immediate relatives if not available only we go for a different uh, donor. Then next is heterograft or xenograft. This is from a different uh, species, another species. Suppose human being is receiving from an animal tissue, then that is called a xenograft. So success rate of graft, if you see, the most successful is with any is it is self-graft only. After that, it is the isograft or between the twins. Then if you go from the uh, very close relatives and after that uh, from the distant uh, person or a different person and after that only a different animal of a species. So these are the main points about the immune system that we have to learn and the next uh, video we will discuss the disorders of our immune system. Hope you like my teaching. Uh, if you have any doubts you can put it in the comment box. I will definitely reply to your questions and uh, please give me your valuable suggestions also. 
some of you are finding it difficult to get, get the videos so first of all to view all the videos you have to subscribe to my channel so please like share and subscribe and uh, you can go to the playlist where I have made playlist according to each chapter in that part 1 part 2 like that mark so you can watch that happy learning stay blessed